the designer of Pop It Up Styles for Elizabeth Craft Designs. And today I'll be teaching a tutorial on this. A mixed size accordion, which means the die sizes are different. The star accordion is a square outer shape and the rectangle is a rectangular outer shape and I'm going to mix those together. I'm doing a rustic Christmas theme. Of course, you can make your own choices for papers and colors. Today I'm using Simple Stories Pumpkin Spice Crisp Air Paper from Echo Park's The Story of Christmas line, a sheet of village pattern paper, a sheet of heavy card shop cardstock called Candy Bar from Basil, and then I've got a five and a half by 11 inch strip of 80 pound smooth cardstock, which I have used spray adhesive to add that to the back of that wood paper. So I'll trim down to just the area that's the white cardstock, and then I'll cut that in half so that I have two five and a half inch squares. These will become my star pages. So I'm gonna use the star accordion, and I want to get that accordion lined up right in the upper left corner of that paper, and I actually want the paper inside the die. So just butt it up right up next to the cut lines in that upper corner. I'm a big fan of removable scotch tape to hold my die in place. You could also use washi tape. Any kind of temporary tape that will not mar your paper is a great choice. Okay, now, when I put this in my machine, and you can use any machine that will accommodate a wafer-thin die, I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot. That's my machine of choice, but really there are lots of machines that will work with my dies. You just want to stop your cutting pad short of the end. So see how I've lined that cutting pad up? It's not going to put any pressure against that bottom edge of the accordion. That way it will cut just the top sides and the star itself, but at the very bottom it'll still stay connected to the rest of the height of my page. When that comes out of the die, you'll see what's happened. It has basically just adjusted the height now. So now that's a full five and a half inches tall. It'll just match perfectly with the height of my rectangle pages, which are gonna be in the center. And all I need to do with my trimmer is just finish out the cut on the right-hand side. That's the side that has the long tab that is used to connect this to the next page in the series. So I can go ahead and find the score line and fold that tab to have it ready for when I'm assembling later. Now, we'll not be able to use the small tab on the star. These pages are gonna have differing widths, so I'm gonna to have to do an adjustment on the width, so I'll just take that little small tab off. Now, I am going to do the exact same thing again. I'm lining up the die in that upper left corner, making sure that it's seated down into the die so that neither the top edge or the left edge is actually going to cut. I'm gonna use the cutting pad, but stop it short of the bottom. So I'm just repeating the exact same process to make another star page. This is the page that's going to end the album, so it will not need a side long tab at all. I can take that off. I can also take off the short tab that's next to the star. The one with the side tab will become the first page of the album. The one with no tabs will be the end page. My other pattern paper and the card shop cardstock, I've cut five inch strips. I'm gonna use those to cut rectangle accordion pages, and I'll cut two from the pattern paper and two from the cardstock. The cardstock pages are my structural pages, and I'll need the tabs that connect them to each other, including the small tabs that connect the two rectangles. I won't need the small tabs on the right page, though, because I'll need new tabs to connect to the star. Speaking of new tabs, I can use the scraps from when I cut those two pages to cut my own tabs to use to connect the star. So I'll just cut kind of two chunky tabs. I'll put those aside for now. Normally you connect side tabs behind the next page so that the tab is hidden. In this case though, I'm gonna cover both of those pages with pattern paper, so I might as well just fold that as a mountain fold and connect it on top of the other page. And that way I'm gonna get that nice folded look on my mountain in the front of the card. You'll actually see that fold instead of a cut edge. So to do that, I'm just gonna use glue. You could also use a strong tape, it's just your preference. I'm using my fine line bottle. It's filled with Lineco pH neutral adhesive. I put all of the supply links on both the blog post and in the YouTube about section. So check either of those two places to find out the materials that I have used and where you might be able to purchase them. Okay, now I'm going to connect those two together using that long tab. And then I'll use my pattern paper to make the frame. So all I need to do is just gut those. I can just do that with scissors. I just cut right where it's connected at the top and the bottom, and then I actually remove the side tab using a trimmer, and that will get, cut it down to just a frame that can fit on the pages as decoration. And nice thing too is that it will cover up that tab. 
I've got my pattern paper frames on and now I'm going to take a look at how this is going to end up in the finished album. Those two rectangles will pivot and come together behind the mountain that is those frames. Then I'll have a star page out here on the left hand side. That star will pivot and come across and connect to the rectangle. So I need to know where that star is in relation to the rectangle just so I can put the tab that I made in the right spot. So I'm going to take that chunky tab, put glue on half of it, it's going to attach to the rectangle. I just want to make sure it's going to be in a spot that's going to hit the star. So that's why I've kind of got that star overlapped just so I can check it. Let me just check it again. When it gets finished, will it hit the star? Yes, it will. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the other page. I'm going to add glue to half of that little rectangular tab, glue it onto the rectangle in such a spot that when the star comes across to it, it will hit the star. And that's all there is to it. Now what I can do is trim out the rectangles from those pattern paper pages that I had cut. That means cutting off all of the tabs in the mechanism and then they can just glue right over the top covering up that tab connection. You're never going to see it. The other half of those chunky tabs is going to be used to connect those rectangles to the stars. So I can fold those down right now just to train them to be mountain folds. I'm not using them yet but that means that they'll be folded and ready. Let me get my star pages added to my album. So I'll use my glue, and again, you could use the Strong Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive tape instead, and I'm gonna connect that tab behind the page so that those two are now hinged together. And out on the other end, I also have a tab, and it is ready to attach to the star page to complete the album. So once again, I use my Strong glue, or you could use the tape and just get it in there and connect it so that it is hinged to the outside edge of the album. A brayer is an excellent tool for making sure that you have a good solid connection. Always easier to decorate accordion albums while they're flat. And for my decoration, I'm gonna start with the Decorator Star die that comes with the Star Accordion. I'm gonna cut a couple of those out of brown. I'm also gonna cut a bunch of frame edges. Those, the, that's the fancy frame edge sold separately. I'm gonna cut eight of those. The stars are going on the front of the album in the Star Pages. When the album is closed, you're gonna see this white page. So what I've decided to do to decorate it is to add a strip of pattern paper along the bottom. That's an inch and a quarter tall, and then I'll just trim it to the width of the album after gluing it in place. And what I'll do is I don't usually decorate the back of the album, but for this album, I decided I wanted to have a nice similar weight to all four pages. So I'll go ahead and do the same exact decoration on the back of the album, starting with my pattern paper along the bottom. I've used die number 774, the fancy frame edges, and I've cut eight of the solid frame edge out of that snowflake pattern paper. Here's how frame edges work with the accordions. They actually leave an inside shadow and an outside shadow, and those shadows are even. So if you take your time with the first one, making sure that you leave a nice, straight, even shadow, both outside the frame edge and inside the frame edge, from there it becomes very easy. You just butt up the next frame edge to the one before it, just pay attention to that inside shadow so that it stays nice, straight, and even. Then you can go all the way around the accordion, adding your frame edges. They will line up just perfectly and give you a beautiful frame. So that's actually the front of the album when the album is closed. Of course, the star will be flipped around in the closed position to the decorated side. Now I added those frame edges to the back of the album as well. And now I'm gonna flip the whole album around again and keep working on my front decoration. The Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive comes in a variety of size sheets and rolls, and one of my favorites is the biggest one, which is the 6-inch wide roll, and especially for white cardstock, because you'll use it all the time. For character eyes, when you want to glitter anything, you'll use that white cardstock that has the double-sided adhesive already on it. So I do big pieces like this. They never, ever go to waste. For my project today, I want to cut down into the adhesive side of the cardstock because everything is going to get embossed. So I've cut the All Seasons Tree and the Snowflake set, plus the Decorator Barn Star that comes with the Star Accordion. There's also a little Decorator Triangle die that comes with the Star Accordion, and that's to be used with the Barn Star when you want to alternate the colors so that you've got a two-tone Barn Star. 
So the barn star die makes all of the score lines. You can actually fold that thing up and have it be a three-dimensional star. But another way to use it is just to use the score lines as guides for the decorator triangles. And they go in every other triangle to make it two-tone. And the tweezers can be really helpful for this. I mean, you can also just do it with your fingers. But if you're trying to avoid getting your fingers down into that adhesive, as I am trying to do, then the tweezers can be very helpful. So I love this two-tone look, especially in red and white, because of course it looks like a peppermint candy. I'm going to use this Stampendous Shabby White Embossing Enamel. I like this. It's really big and chunky. It's going to be perfect for that kind of shabby chic look that I'm going for on this accordion. And it will stick everywhere where there is exposed adhesive. So basically all of the panels that are not red are still sticky and they will grab that embossing powder. Now I've done this over scratch paper so that I can recycle all of the leftover powder back into the jar. The embossing powder will need to be melted, so I'll use a heat gun for that. I love how this turned out and it's sparkly and it's chunky and it's just perfect for my page one and my page four decoration. I'll just go in and glue that into place. I've already added a second one that I can put on page four. I'm going to use the same embossing powder on my All Seasons tree, just peel up the liner, cover it with the embossing powder, and emboss. Now I don't want any branches that stick out the sides of my rectangles because they'll get in the way of the tabs when I connect them. Branches at the top are fine as long as it can still pivot, but nothing on the sides. And I use the outdoor edges along the bottom of those rectangles to make the little snow banks out of the wood paper. So now I'm ready to decorate my rectangle on the right the exact same way as the rectangle on the left. My tree goes on first, trim off any branches that are on the sides, add my little snow bank at the bottom. Glue on the little small rectangle tabs, and those are what's going to be used to join the two rectangles to each other. They join behind the mountain, that is those big outer frames. And I'm going to flip that album all the way over so that I can see those tabs on the back of the album, making sure that they stay together even when those two pages close. The rectangle accordion comes with decorator rectangle dies, and I've used the larger one with that snowflake pattern paper to cut two rectangles to go on the back of the album. I don't normally decorate the back, but in this case, because of the shape of the star, you'll actually see a little bit of the back of that rectangle when the album is closed. So this will add that decoration as well as help reinforce those tabs. All right, now we're going to talk about chunky tab. Chunky Tab is going to attach to the back of the star, but we don't know where. We need the album to tell us where. So let's fold up the album, and then you'll see Chunky Tab is sitting there, and in the closed position, it'll be very easy to know exactly where to attach it. So let's add some glue to the top of old Chunky Tab and see how it's folded over onto the stack, and the glue is on the top of the tab. I'll hold that in position and close the page. What'll happen is that I'm going to let the album tell me where that tab needs to attach to the back of the star. And it is attached to the back of the star, it's just not right on the edge of the star because those two pages are different widths. So we need the album to tell us where it needs to go. Okay, let's repeat the process for the back chunky tab. We're folded up the album, we're adding adhesive to the top of old chunky there, we're going to hold that closed, rotate the star so that it's the back of the star that hits the glue, and give it all a good press in the closed position. So we're basically letting the album tell us where Chunky Tab needs to go. Now here's why the star is such a good choice for this mixed accordion technique, because the star overhanging the other pages doesn't look weird. In fact, it's kind of a cool feature that you can take advantage of. I'm going to pierce some holes in the overhang area of both stars. So this is the piece of the star that overhangs into the tree pages. And I'm going to use those holes now to suspend a string of beads right across the opening. I also really like that extra area that's at the base of the star pages. It's just perfect for adding a greeting. You can also sign the page in those locations. So I've added the script Merry Christmas from the Merry Christmas die. I also put some of those snowflakes that I had embossed earlier hung from jump rings across the bead strand. And then the front of the album has a little piece of red ribbon and a red ribbon bow. So I really like this mixed accordion in that you see a little bit of the rectangle frame even when the album is closed. You basically kind of see a lot of the layers. You see the beads hanging in there, some little snowflakes and things peeking out, 
you can see the back of the rectangles kind of around the stars. So it's just a lot of layers to this thing that I think it makes it very, very pretty, even in the closed position and the open position. Check the About section or the associated blog post for a full supply list, and you can also go to ElizabethCraftDesigns.com. If you are a Facebook user, I'd love it if you'd like my Facebook page, Karen Berniston Designer, where you will be treated to daily inspiration. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel, and you can always find more ideas on my blog, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching.